Married underage girls should be tagged eligible voters, so say some federal lawmakers. And with 2023 elections calling, there are calls for a Tinumbu presidency. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayodi Ladeni. Welcome, let's get talking. The National Assembly Joint Committee on the Independent National Electoral Commission matters has proposed a review of the provision in the Electoral Act which pegged the eligibility of a voter at 18 years. The federal lawmakers recommended that INEC should consider any married girl who is not up to 18 years as eligible to vote. The Joint Committee proposed that if a lady who is not up to 18 years is married, she should be considered to be mature enough and be eligible to vote. Joining us to discuss this, we have a former presidential candidate in the last election on the platform of ADP, I mean, former presidential aspirant, because I guess um, uh, we're yet to have him as, on the poster as a candidate. I'm referring to Matthias Sado. Uh, good evening, Mr. Sado. Thank you very much, Kayade. Yeah, and we, also, and we also have Jide Olugu, who is a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Mr. Jide. Good evening. You're welcome. Hey. Yeah, good to have you. But uh, let me see whether uh, any of you will shock me, because most of the comments we are, we are getting to hear on the social media is that of condemnation. Is there something we are not seeing that these lawmakers are seeing? Uh, let me start with uh, Matthias. Well, Kayode, I think I would not uh, shock you. <laughs> um, just like um, a number of Nigerians have um, I wondered what, what, what exactly is the reason behind um, such kind of thoughts. Uh, I too have wondered what, in fact, the moment I so it, I just um, uh, deleted it from my page so that it doesn't uh, come in as a feed um, because I was, it was kind of irritating. Uh, we have a lot of um, issues in the country. I was listening to a former secretary of a state government uh, this morning speaking about how elections are being rigged and which he is fully aware of. Uh, we know quite a number of people in Nigeria um, that believe that elections in the country is not um, the way we want it to be yet. So if you at the moment cannot manage the current numbers we have, and besides, let's look at it. We have uh, a huge number of uh, um, registered voters. Look at what happened in the le last Lagos uh, election. That's uh, is it, um, the um, by-elections that I heard in Lagos. Uh, how many people came out compared to the number of um, voters we, we have registered in that place? So I think the, what um, the priority of the National Assembly uh, and the INEC should be at the moment is how do we get citizens to come out, to come and participate? Um, the, uh, the, the age for um, marriage in Nigeria, based on the Nigerian constitution, is, is set at 18. So for anybody to think that um, somebody should be uh, illegally married because as far as the constitution of Nigeria is concerned at the moment, it's even illegal for you to marry somebody that is um, below age 18. So uh, and then try to put it in the constitution or put it into the law. I think it's, it's absurd, it's laughable and... Um, um, I think it should be rejected totally uh, okay. by um, all Nigerians. Matthias, I, I will come back to you, but let me try my luck with Jide, whether Jide has a, uh, has a different narrative. Can, can I have your take? Uh, let me have your opening remark on this issue. I, I tie myself with the expression of Mr. Matthias, and <laughs> I see it more of a distraction from the several issues plaguing us in the country now that should engage the attention of the honorable members of the National Assembly. But having said that, they are personalities 
who are deeply engrossed in their different cultures. And now we are bringing marriage into this. But this came up earlier. And let's look at the position of the law. If you look at the Marriage Act of uh, 2000, the Child Rights Act of 2003, it sets the marriage at 18 years. But shockingly, only about 23 of Nigeria's 36 states have adopted this act. And that tells us that some people are still comfortable with child marriage, due, perhaps due to their religion or culture. And in some areas of the country, you may, you may realize that the minimum age can be as low as 12 years. You recall mm -hmm. the case of Senator uh, Ahmed Yerima, who yeah. in 2010 sparked controversy when he married a 13-year-old girl. And I recall there was a time a review committee was looking at section 29 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended. You're talking about your ability to renounce your citizenship. And in that section, there is a clause that says that full age means the age of 18 and above. And it's also specified that any woman who is married shall be deemed to be of full age. So you can see where this is coming from, deemed to be of full age. You can look, check that out in section 29 of section 4B. And they started debating this, but it did not fly. And Senator Yerima was the arrowhead of pushing uh, that this be that the that, that particular clause uh, be deleted from the constitution. So uh, now when we now tie it to <clears throat> voting, I mean, like Mr. Matab brilliantly mentioned, even if 200 million Nigerians are expected to vote and only 100,000 comes out to vote, that vote will still come. So I don't know what exactly is going on. Is anybody afraid? or thinking that maybe because of the reforms going on with the INEC now, what we experienced in Edo State recently, where you got the engagement of IT effectively, and that you want to populate your electorates. I don't understand, or are you through the back door? Okay. Um, Mr. Jide, I'll come back to you. I understand there's a bit of... Uh, fluctuation in your network, but it, uh, but your points are quite noted. And let me speak to Matthias. Matthias, we brought you into this discussion so that we can express some bit of sensitivity to the culture, to the religion. And you are from Niger State, even though you may not be a Muslim, but you're closer to understand the thinking of whoever is behind this idea. Um, can we put this into context to look at the heterogeneity of Nigeria, to look at it that this is something that is not an abomination as much as uh, the secular state sees it as uh, illegal, but what about the Sharia law? Does it see it as illegal? I will put that into context. Well, um, Kyrde, the laws that govern the Nigeria state is the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not the Sharia law. So if we are looking at the secular state, um, the secular state of the Nigeria uh, state, um, our conversation should be around the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not um, any state law. Now, should states want to advance their various state laws, uh, maybe if Kanu, for instance, wants to introduce uh, underage voting through marriage into the um, electoral arrangement of the Nigerian state, Kanu is free to do that for the state governor, uh, governorship election for or the state legislature, uh, legislature for the representatives of the state for the enclave called Kano State. But when it comes to national elections, I don't think it's reasonable. Uh, I, I'm just saying this, like maybe should, should someone want to consider that at all? Um, but really, uh, based on what I know, based on my understanding of 
this particular environment, a lot of people actually see that when you are married, um, you are responsible. Uh, when you are married, you are when you are married, you are of you are you have come of age, and um, so for that reason, when like they usually say is that uh, when you have. Um, uh, taking a woman in your house, or when you have entered into a man's house, you have gained the right to sit where elders sit. Uh, I think this is the thinking, and I can tell you that this is, um, as far as I'm concerned, is backward. It's uh, primitive. It's no. It doesn't at all uh, address the issues that Nigeria as a state is faced with. Uh, I, I don't think we bring in, in the conversation of whether Sharia law or whatever laws that are existing in the state into the secular arrangement of the Nigerian state. Um, I don't think that is that is at the moment allowed. If um, Nigeria was a restructured company, country like a lot of people have been advocating for, we are Okay, uh, we'll quickly uh, take a short break and sort out that disturbing uh, sound that is coming from the other end. Uh, trust us, we'll be back after a short break. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics, and we are looking at the issue around the proposal by some lawmakers and the National Assembly calling for any lady that is married should be considered as eligible voter, even if it is under 18 years. And uh, my two guests, uh, Gideo Lugu and that of um, Mataya Sado, are also kicking seriously against this issue. We had a bit of a technical itch, and we are back to continue the conversation. Let me continue with you, GD. Um, you've listened to Mat Matthias. He said it should not even be considered at all, that he's a secular state, and the issue of culture and religion should not be up for discussion, so to say. Do you share that same sentiment? Absolutely. And I think it only helps us to identify the quality of those we have to represent our interests there. And of course, there are several levels of interest. You have the national interest, you have the personal interest, you have the partisan interest, you have cultural interest. But with all the issues bordering us in the country, if bringing underage on board to vote is on the front burner, of some members of the National Assembly, then I'm so worried for our democracy. So, but I hope that uh, uh, major stakeholders do not throw this under the carpet because when you begin to feel movements like this, they are going somewhere. But like I mentioned earlier, perhaps the interest may not be about elections. The interest may actually be about bringing up again this issue of uh, underage marriage, which globally, it's not acceptable, you see, and of course, naturally too. But for cultural reasons, some are comfortable with that. But I quite appreciate the response of the chairman of INEC, who has politely echoed the fact that the constitution may not be in support of that. And again, it's also good to mention that other issues that are being considered in making proposals to was the amendment of the Electoral Act is the issue of electoral victory. That is it for the candidate or for the party. Remember the case of uh, Governor Audu in Kogi State who passed on the, the recent case where a party won in a by-election even though there was no candidate. That issue also must be of concern and other issues. So by and large, I think the issue of bringing uh, on eight girls to vote because just because they are it's not it's not a welcome development. But having said that, also we've had reports in the past in some past elections in this country where underage actually came out to vote in mm -hmm. some parts mm -hmm. of the country. We have some evidence, and so it's a matter of our willingness to do the right thing. Um, and exactly, you just read my mind. We want to look at this, and that brings us to some kind of comments in the social media that we should think beyond uh, what is being put out there, that this could be a subtle plan 
to have some kind of electoral fraud where you have underage voting being legalized, being given some kind of bite. Matthias, will politicians go this far to have you know, more numbers? Because uh, the region that is being alleged as guilty seems to have the highest number of uh, registered voters. So what more could there be that um, there could be such clandestine move? Karade, politicians go to any lengths to achieve their whatever they set out to achieve. Um, unfortunately, you and I understand very well that Nigeria as a country or leadership in Nigeria or governance in Nigeria is not about the governed, but it's about those who are governing. And so for that reason, you see them because it's a zero sum game Every single person that wants to get to that place wants to ensure that his road to success in terms of getting to um, elected position is guaranteed. So I'm not surprised that Nigeria, the, the politicians will go to any length. The politicians in Nigeria see polit uh, politics and elections as war. And it's, it's not war in terms of ideologies or views that... It uh, uh, has to do with human development or anything, but war in terms of who controls the resources of the state, who is able to administer these resources to their own pocket and to their friends, to their cronies, and what have you. So really, um, if, if I see any move by politicians in this regard, I'm not going to be surprised. Uh, and just like you have seen in several attempts that politicians have made in the past to... Um, perpetuate themselves in power. Uh, this, is just one of the, this is just one of the game. And uh, uh, th I think we see um, the system, because of the, the new idea of, uh, of electronic voting, there is this fear, there's this palpable fear, uh, fear in the North that, that, that seems to be suggesting that uh, we might be having a lot of uneducated people who are not able to carry out the voting and my, at the end of the day, affect the numbers in terms of the, uh, the um, votes from the North. So this might be to just ensure that um, there is um, security and uh, to, to buffer whether uh, this happens, uh, if, if eventually... I, 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 I'm just imagining uh, how that will work, whether these children, that's the language it should be called, these children will, be, will, will, will present a marriage certificate they never had and uh, how they will be registered. I, I totally on, I'm on the same page with both of you. But before we go, let's look at um, what both of you consider as more important things, what we should be looking at in the electoral reforms. So we all agree that this should not even be submitted to INEC for consideration. But let's look at other issues. What do you think must not escape the electoral reform as amended now? Let me start with you, Jide. What other issues do you consider as more important? I think one other issue that has been prompted now is the issue of cross-carpeting. You found those who leveraged on political parties uh, influence to win elections and for perhaps their personal uh, selfishness, they jump both and nothing happens. They continue in office. I think we need to correct that and bring a high level of sanity to our electoral processes. Like I said the other time, is it really for the, the victory? Is it for the candidate or for the party? And we must amplify the need to engage IT and carry out the spirit of Section 15, of Section 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended that says the state shall abolish corruption and abuse of office. So let's be transparent in our processes so that we can focus on governance and not just on politics. And that is why I'm pushing it back to the National Assembly now to go back and study Section 14, of Section 2 of the Nigerian Constitution that helps with governance. And it says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of God. As Nigeria is today, have we fulfilled the primary purpose of government? And let them live under age marriage 
in a corner. If okay. you want to take that risk for I'll your religious you. or cultural, go ahead. So let's fix Nigeria. Let there be prosperity in this land. Let there be development. Let's come out of economic recession. Let there be maximum maximization of our resources for the benefits of, of, of the citizens. I, I think those are issues that should concern them. Okay, I'll come back to you for your final comment. But let me quickly get uh, Matt Hayes on other issues you consider as more important. Some people have felt the issue of uh, minimum qualification for people to contest should be upgraded for us to have maybe some kind of intellectuals in governance. Why, felt, why some felt this is this also inconsequential. We've had some lettered men and there was probably no difference. What's your take on that? Mm. Well, I think, uh, Kayode, first of all, um, I was a victim of one terrible uh, issue in 2019, during 2000 and run up to 2019 elections. That is um, the cost of contesting for position in Nigeria. Wow. It was a major issue. I had, in fact, I shared my, my, my manifesto with a lot of people in and outside Nigeria, and many of them were wowed by what, I, what the, the plans that I have in terms of um, answering some of the questions that GDA has, re, uh, has raised as regards to um, national prosperity and um, uh, the security of the country. But unfortunately, it was so difficult for me to um, get the funds to be able to advance my, my project. And so I think it's very, very crucial that we consider that particular uh, provision that people should pay exorbitant figures for um, uh, contesting for position in the country. I think it's outrageous. It shouldn't be. Uh, and then um, to speak to the issue of qualification, you see, based on the... Uh, provisions of the constitution that the current uh, level that is uh, uh, provided in the constitution is that you are you are a, uh, a, a secondary liver you, you hold a um, certificate in secondary school I, I think beyond these conversations we need to have a system whereby individuals who want to run for office are put to test for a, for a period of uh, maybe months before final peaks takes place, such that you have primaries like you have in in the in United States of America. You have all maybe fifteen or thirty Democrats coming together, and all of them, whether their qualification be whatever at whatever level, let them let the go, let the let the uh, the, the commission that is the electoral um, el, um, electoral commission supervise these processes and make sure that the Nigerian people get to see that these individuals who want to be our leaders are qualified not only in terms of um, document, in terms of papers, but even mentally being able to address issues, being able to speak to matters that are important for the country. I think these two key things. And then the last and the very, very important one is electronic voting, electronic voting, electronic voting. Electronic voting should be sacrosanct. It should not be something that should be subject to whether we, uh, we uh, the people like it or not. No, as a matter of fact, if, if, you can, if we cannot do electronic voting in 2023, we should ask the INEC to postpone the election because it will just be useless. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Matthias, uh, if time permits us. But I think that might be your last comment because of time. But let me quickly hear um, what uh, Gideon Logan has to say. Maybe there are other issues. We're beginning to see a bit of distraction. This time around, we're talking about um, underage girls should be allowed to vote. And the other time, it was an issue of let's peg the maximum age or the, 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 the age you shouldn't be above for you to, con to be a president or a governor. Do you think these issues are distractions? And what are the things that, what more should we focus on? They are offensive distractions. You see, when Chief Olusha Gomba Sanjo consulted Lee Kuan Yew, that translated Singapore from a third world country to a first world country, the man told him, we decided to do the right thing. 
and we continue to do the right thing. Singapore is one of the best places to live and work in the world today. And I want to leave our 109 senators and 360 House of Rest members with this passage in the Bible, which is in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2, that when the people flourish, is the righteous are in office. But when the people groan, it is a reflection of wickedness. So let's represent the people to prosperity. Can we please have electricity in Nigeria? Can we begin to industrialize? Can we begin to have functional binaries? Can we begin to engage the resource for the benefit of the people and minimize the gaps that we have in the country? Can we stop the bloodshed? Can we be removed from the list of terrorist nations? Can we be having several issues okay. that are bothering us? Can we have a responsive and resourceful government? And I think when we focus on that, uh, the age of those who are voting may not be of interest. But like a man rightly said, the politician is interested in the next election, but the state men are interested in, in a prosperous generation. future for their people. So God bless Nigeria. Thank you so and much. blessed you are know, those who allow themselves to be used by God to I, bless Nigeria. I perceive strongly that this is Pastor Gide Olugu. Thank you for your submission <laughs> on that. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Mata Asado, for your insight. It's quite appreciative. And let's hope that we will not focus on the unimportant issues. We'll focus on things that will really build us as a nation. Thank you for your submission once again. Thank you very much, Kaiode. Yeah. And our viewers, we'll take a short break and when we return, conversations surrounding our 2023 Tinubu presidency is up next. Please, don't go anywhere.